Hey, I'm Bob Warfield, and this video is going to take you through GWizard Advanced Setup. It's your first what we call bonus lesson in the series. Bonus lessons give you extra information that you don't need uh, for the basics, but that if you want to be a real power user and be able to pull out all the stops, uh, you want to have this information. So let's, let's get into it. What is Advanced Setup? It's pretty simple, really. It means we're going to give GWizard even more information about your machine so it can do an even better job for you. One thing I want to start out saying, though, is advanced means more powerful, not harder. It covers things like spindle power curves, machine rigidity compensation so that you can uh, limit the cutting forces on lightweight machines that are not as, ri as rigid. Uh, premium coolant options through spindle coolant, high pressure coolant, programmable coolant nozzles. Uh, information that other apps use. Uh, in, G in the GWizard software family, we create core technology. Um, and so the machine profile has information that's used by other apps, such as our uh, G code simulator, GWizard editor. Uh, and then lastly, the ability to share your folders across machines and multiple apps so that you don't have to worry about rekeying any of the data. Okay? Okay, so here's GWizard. Just as we left it in the last video, it's all set up for uh, a Haas VF2 in this case. And the way you get to the advanced setup is you just click the simple advanced buttons. So we click the advanced and boom, here's all the extra fields that are available to tell GWizard even more about your machine. So we've got, for example, what kind of a spindle uh, taper does your machine have? By the way, if you don't know, just, just put other. There's no harm in that. Um, what's the size of the taper, right? Cat 40, cat 50, whatever. Uh, we already talked about maximum, minimum RPM, uh, maximum spindle power. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to come back to this adjust in a second after I run through the rest of these fields. Yeah. Spindle zero to maximum RPM time. How long does it take to spin your spindle from zero all the way up to maximum RPM? That's used in our G code simulator. So it can more accurately predict how long, uh, your programs are going to run. Uh, the spindle adjustment lets you, uh, reduce the spindle speed recommendations that GWizard makes on feeds and speeds uh, if you want to be more conservative. So, for example, you could come along and say, hey, uh, I want to uh, reduce my spindle speed to only 80% of whatever it is uh, GWizard is going to recommend. And so if we're running in carbide, this little tool life calculator says, well, great, that gets us 1.9 times uh, more tool life, almost twice as much tool life uh, if you just slow down the spindle like that. Um, I'm going to leave it at 100% for the time being. Uh, we already talked about maximum feed rate. Some machines like to have their feed rate in seconds rather than minutes. Rather than inches per minute, they want to go inches per second. Uh, so you can use that to do that. Uh, maximum rapids. Um, you know, how fast can the machine move when it's not cutting? Uh, sometimes that's the same as the max feed rate, and on some machines it's, it can be much higher. This is how far your machine can travel in each of the different uh, uh, three directions, X, Y, and Z motion. Uh, your machine's acceleration. That's important both for predicting how long G-code is going to take to run, which again, that's another product doing that, uh, and also... Um, what speed is going to be happening at a particular point in the G-code. You'd be surprised at how often uh, uh, little short moves don't give enough time for the cut to come up to full speed. Uh, you probably are not going to know the acceleration on your machine. Uh, they don't quote it very often from the manufacturer, but if you do, go ahead and plug that in. Um, your machine's weight uh, is a is an important factor for machine rigidity adjustment for small machines. And we'll get back to that here shortly and how to do that. Uh, the hourly rate calculator is actually part of our uh, GWizard Estimator product. Uh, we'll check that out in another video. 
let's see, we've got tool changer slots and tool change time, chip to chip. Uh, showed you the tool life uh, calculation. You can also reduce the chip load, or that's really going to be your feed rate. Just like you can reduce your uh, spindle RPM for all feeds and speeds calculation, uh, you can reduce your chip load. Uh, you know, I don't recommend messing with those adjustments if you're just starting out. Uh, they're really there for uh, power users and experts. Uh, here's a powerful feature. You can tell G-Wizard what, if any, premium coolant options you have. For example, uh, I click that button by TSC. That's through spindle coolant. And your feeds and speeds will go up pretty substantially if you have uh, through spindle coolant. Uh, same way with high pressure coolant. And uh, there's also a thing called a programmable coolant nozzle uh, where the machine uh, robotically aims where the coolant's going to go so you get better chip clearing. All these things, if you enable them, uh, will let G-Wizard uh, calculate higher performance feeds and speeds for you. Okay? Now, let's go back and look at, uh, let's look at this spindle power adjustments a little more carefully. So we've got a couple of different options, uh, and I want to start out with the uh, weight-adjusted horsepower. This is rigidity compensation. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a small machine, uh, and using this, this number, we're going to calculate what the maximum horsepower you could use on the machine is if you want it to behave uh, in terms of how much things deflect, similar to a vertical machining center or similar to a CNC router, which even industrial routers are quite a bit less rigid than VMCs. Um, so let's go ahead and dial up uh, uh, a lightweight machine. In this case, I'm going to take our Shape Oco. And uh, actually, I want to take a different Shape Oco because we set that up without entering the advanced uh, stuff, the advanced information. Uh, let's take a shape, shape Oco here. Um, let's add it to my shop. We're going to go back to my shop. Okay, this is the factory Shape Oco profile. All right, and here we can see what's going on. So the machine's travels. Uh, the machine weighs 57 pounds, yada, yada. Uh, if we go to adjust that, to weight adjust it, and turn that on here, and we say let's make it run like an industrial router, like a big router, and we save that, uh, what we see is we're really pretty okay here on this weight adjustment. Um, it doesn't want to really change our horsepower too much. So that means that that spindle is a pretty good fit for that machine. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, what about power curves? We want to come down here and uh, look at our power curves. Uh, we, we can just start to enter and we can say, well, let's see, at uh, uh, zero, we got 1.3 horsepower. Let's, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, say that we've got that all the way up to, I don't know, 10,000. Okay. Great. Now that's just going to show us what it looks like. So let's at zero, we've got 1.3 horse. Right. Let's add that point. Uh, we've got at 10,000, let's say it's going to start tapering off. So we got 10,000, we've got 1.1 horse. We'll add that right at uh, 15,000. Let's say we're going to go down to one horse, add that. And you can see what it's going to do is it's going to let you build your power curve so that G Wizard will compensate for the actual power that's available at the different RPMs. On a lot of machines, you don't get all, all the power at every different RPM range. You know, it's just like a car. It's got a, it's got a power band, and that's why you've got a transmission in the car is to try to keep it near where your peak power is on your engine. So you'd hit save, and you'd be running a power curve, adjusted curve. Okay? Uh, the last thing I want to show you, so that's that's all pretty simple. Remember, uh, advanced doesn't mean hard, it just means more powerful. Um, and you can even go back out of that and go back to viewing it the simple way. Now, I want to show you how to set up uh, a sharing of the data. It's really simple. 
Uh, normally, your data is stored in what's called the Preferences folder. Okay, and that's where you would go to find that if you needed to get in there and see what was going on. Uh, that's where the application's installed there. Um, for IT guys, this is telling you what uh, our, our cloud API, uh, what, what URL is accessed for that. Uh, so probably don't need to worry about that. Uh, but if you're going to share, you need to tell it where you want to share. So for example, we're saying uh, we want to go out here and make a folder called CNC Cookbook if we turn on sharing. And what that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and uh, it's going to park all of your, uh, your files for your preferences, your machine profiles, your tool crib, all of those defaults are now going to go into this shared folder. Um, and if you have other uh, machines or other GWizard software and you set up every one of them to use that folder, they'll share it. Okay. And so uh, the other thing it'll do is if somebody else gets on a machine and wants to access setup, you have to exit the setup before they can do that, right? So now I'm out of setup. So it locks it up so you can't kind of step on each other's toes. Only one, one person on one of the machines at a time can go into the shared setup. All right. So that pretty much uh, takes us through uh, the advanced setup options for GWizard. Thanks very much for listening, and we'll be back at you with another video soon.